Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to show you how I did this Bible journaling page by stamping with watercolor, not with stamping ink, but with watercolor. And the verse that I'm going to use is right here in the chapter of Isaiah. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. And what I thought about using was this stamp set with all these cactus in it from Paper Rose. If you've never used stamps before, they make them in different kinds of stamps. These are clear stamps and they're just like this plastic acrylic type stuff. And you uh, stick them onto a block in order to stamp them. I'll show you all how to do that. But what I'm doing is laying out the stamps in the order that I kind of think I want to make a collection of them. But I want to remove all the little uh, containers that they're in. These are potted plants, potted cacti. But what I've done is now I've got the one that's in the front of my layout, the front of my picture, and I've got it placed where I want it. So I'm lining up that block with the corner of the page. So now I know all I have to do is kind of get it in that area and I'll have it in the right spot. And instead of stamping on ink, I'm going to stamp into watercolor. And the reason is a lot of the inks that we have in our craft rooms may not work on Bible paper. They might bleed through. So let's look at what's going to happen if we stamp with watercolor instead. I know my watercolors don't bleed. So I'm mixing up enough pigment and water mixture that you can see the brush strokes in it because it has to be kind of thick. If you can't see the brush strokes, if it's just a puddle, then it's not going to work all that well. But test it out. I'm using a little block that I got, a little tile from the hardware store. But any really flat surface will do because it has to be flat for your stamp to stamp into it. And then stamp it onto the page. And this first one didn't go as well as I had hoped because I ended up getting some of the green on the ground portion. I ended up getting it on the, the pot and I tried washing some of that away, but I'm gonna be putting sand in there anyway, the ground underneath, so that's gonna cover that up. I'm not too worried about it, but I'm adding color into the stamp so I can paint it and leaving some highlights in there and that sort of thing. If you do the watercoloring while the paint is really, really wet, then you can still move the paint. But if it dries, then it's gonna dry so that a little bit of it will move with water, but you won't wash it all away. So if you want to keep that line there, then, then that would be one way to, to keep it there while being able to paint over it, just let it dry first. So I'm gonna mix another color, adding some yellow to it. And again, look how you can see the brush strokes in there. So I wanted that paint thick enough. If you're having trouble getting it thick enough, let it sit on the plate for a bit to dry on that tile. And as it dries and some of that moisture wicks out of it, then it will get thicker and then it'll work for this. The reason that you don't want it really soppy wet is because if all the paint goes into those crevices in the stamp, then you're gonna end up with paint in there and it's gonna blob. So if you end up with blobbies, that would be why. So I wiped off this time the little parts of the pot that I accidentally dipped in it. So I didn't wanna make that mistake again. And then I'll get my third one set up. I want just the top of this little guy. And so I've got him on the block and I'm mixing up another paint. And this time I'm gonna mix some blues in it just for fun. You can mix any color this way, which is kind of nice if you've got inks that you're, you have to stick with the ink colors you have or your marker colors to do this. It's a whole lot easier to mix the paint colors that you want. And I'm using just a shredded up sticky note. <laughs> to do my masking. I put it over top of the cactus that are down there at the bottom so that I could stamp the top of this and it's not gonna stamp over top of the cactus that are there. It's a real easy way to mask by just using those little sticky pieces of paper. And I'm wiping these off, just washing them off with a baby wipe. Nice and easy to keep them clean. And now I've got my last cactus. I'm gonna mix up paint again and depending on how much you put in there. If your brush is really wet, you're gonna end up with that puddly type of paint and you'll have to just keep adding pigment to it until it gets thick enough or just let it sit for a few minutes and let some of that, that moisture dry out of it. So here I'm trying hard to get that thick enough because right now it's just too puddly and I, I can't see the brush strokes. So I'm just gonna keep adding color to it. 
and then I'll get my little uh, my little sticky notes on there. I've let the paint dry a little bit so that I'll be able to stamp with it. Get my stamp all covered and then lay the stamp down on top of where those sticky notes are protecting the paper underneath of it. Now I missed that top section. I didn't end up getting enough paint on it. So I can, since I can see through the stamp, I can just reline that up and I'm only pressing down on that tip. Since I'm doing loose watercolor here, it's okay to paint some of those details in if you mess something up or if you overstamp something a little bit. Very easy to do by just touching it up with your watercolors. So now it's a matter of painting the rest of the scene and keeping that going. And you can paint as heavily or as lightly as you want. I'm painting each one of my leaves on the left hand side so it looks like there's a highlight on the right hand side of each one of those petals of the cactus. I'm not sure if they're called petals when they're cactus. Are they leaves? I'm not sure. I don't live in the southwest so I don't really have a lot of knowledge about cactus but I did want to put a bunch of different colors in them and again with each one of the strips those little stripes in there there's those um, you know, veins I guess in these tall cactus I'm just putting it on the left hand side of each one so that it starts to have a little bit of lightness on one side of it to paint the bottom section, I put a piece of paper underneath of it so that I can paint the sand or the dirt down below without dripping down the side of my Bible. So I put a little sheet of paper down there. And you can have it as dark or as light as you prefer for your piece of artwork. I always start out with it a little bit light and then start working in darker. If you use my method of ironing things to try to flatten them out, and you iron while it's wet, then a lot of the color is going to disappear onto the paper that you're ironing because I put a piece of paper over it when I do my ironing. So if you want the color to remain and, and stay the color that you've painted, it's always going to lighten a little as it dries. But if you don't want that to disappear, then let it air dry. I find air drying works a lot better than heat setting. A lot of people get impatient and they try to heat set, but this paper dries quickly enough that I don't usually find it a problem. So here's the first layer on this one. I let it all dry, but I decided I wanted more color on it. So I'm gonna put thicker paint. And by thicker, I just mean less water and dipping more heavily into the, the dark paint that I wanted. So I want the dark color on the left, but I still want the scripture readable on the right hand side. So I'm gonna let that slowly fade out as it gets over onto the right hand side. Now I know that that's always gonna dry lighter. So I'm very aware of how much dark and light to put down in order to keep the words readable. But if you're new to this, it'll just take some practice. So do light layers and just add more on if you're looking for that rich contrast. For the sky, I'm just gonna paint some really fun blues up there and I'm not gonna worry about trying to paint perfect clouds or make anything really smooth. I'm just gonna kinda of let that blue paint be right around my cactus and then smoosh it around on the paper itself to create a little scene. If you're somebody who's trying to replicate this and you don't have these stamps, you don't have to get them. I will have them linked in the description down below, but you can always draw your own cactuses in there as well. Cactuses are just kind of a lump with things sticking out of them a little bit. So for my text, I'm drawing it in in pencil first and I'm personalizing the verse. And I like to do that when I do my text on my Bible pages because it makes it into more of a prayer rather than just replicating what's already in the verse. So I had been thinking about how sometimes my spirit is just really dry and just everything around me feels dry and I need God to pour out his spirit. And sometimes it's just in the morning I need his spirit poured out because I, I don't know, my pastor kind of says sometimes, and I, I have to laugh at this because it's so true, but he says, we leak. And I feel like I woke wake up some mornings and I woke up dry. I, I leaked all night and there's nothing left. And I really need the spirit to pour out on my dry land, the, the dry areas of my life. And I'm leaving some space for journaling down there in the bottom for myself so I can put my own little 
personal prayer down there after the video is all finished. And there you go. That is the video for today. Now I am going to have a version of this done on a card on my other channel. If you didn't know, I have a crafty channel as well. And later on this week, I'm going to use this same stamp set and the same technique on watercolor paper. So you may learn some other tips from using this same thing by following along with that video later on. All right. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. I'll talk to you guys again next week. Have a lovely, lovely week. Go spend time with the Lord, and I'll see you again next Sunday. Bye-bye.